Hey everyone, if I had to choose one lens to use for the rest of my life to do photography with and to make it even more challenging, this lens has to be a prime lens, not a zoom lens. I would choose the 35 millimeter focal length and in this video, I'm gonna share with you why. A 35 millimeter is known as a standard lens in photography, the other standard lens being known as a 50 millimeter. If you take a look at my work, a lot of the time I'm using a 35 millimeter prime lens on a full frame camera. A 35 has a semi-wide field of view while still looking quite natural. Because of this view, a 35 millimeter is extremely versatile and can come in handy for so many different styles of photography and even videography. If learning about focal lengths is new to you, I have a whole playlist with real world tests and examples comparing focal lengths, which I'll leave linked in the description. But as a quick comparison right now, here's a photo taken with a 35 millimeter prime lens versus a photo taken with the model standing in the same spot on a 135 millimeter prime lens. In the 35 photo, you can see plenty of the location in the frame and you can easily make out what the background is, even though I shot this wide open at f1.4. In the 135 photo, on the other hand, it almost looks as if the background has been pulled towards the model since the longer focal length is compressing the frame. I also shot this wide open at f2, but there is much more bokeh and less texture in the background. I also want to mention throughout this video, I am referring to a 35mm focal length on a full frame camera. If you're using an APS-C camera body, you will want to use a focal length of around 24mm to achieve a similar field of view. If you're in micro four thirds, you would need to use around 17mm and if you're in medium format, then you would need to use anywhere between 45 to 75mm depending on what system you're using to achieve the same look as 35 millimeters on full frame. There are so many 35 millimeter prime lenses, most of which I have tested out over the years and made reviews about. I've tested out over 30 35 millimeter lenses, and I even have a video talking about all of them with photo examples. I've owned quite a few different 35 mil lenses over the last 10 years, but the one that I use the most at the moment is this one, the GM 35 millimeter F 1.4. I love this lens for photography because it's small and lightweight for the image quality you're getting. The aperture ring on the lens is super handy. It's fast at focusing and keeping focus on a moving subject and I love what the bucket looks like. But the brand doesn't really matter for a lot of the points I'm talking about in this video. You can still achieve the same style of photography with a more budget friendly 35 too. One of the main reasons I love this focal length so much is because it's extremely versatile, which is why I find I reach for it in my camera bag so often. I like to use the 35 millimeter focal length for almost everything. During wedding day, I normally have two camera bodies on me all day. And while one of the camera bodies, I am switching out the focal length for something different depending on the part of the day I'm capturing. My main camera body has the 35 millimeter prime lens on it all day. When I'm traveling and I'm going to be spending all day out and about, if I don't feel like carrying too much gear, I will only take my 35 millimeter and just keep that lens on my camera. I do this whether I am traveling through a city. So recently I've shared vlogs from my time in Prague and Poznan where I used a 35 a lot. <laughs> I also use this lens if I'm visiting mountain locations, waterfalls, lakes, because I find that it works in the majority of natural locations to create compositions with. Aside from using 35 millimeter lenses on my full frame camera, I also use film point and shoot cameras, most of which are a 35 millimeter focal length. I find I use these cameras the most while traveling, the semi-wide framing of these is perfect to capture images with a balance between seeing the subject but also enough of the location they're in as well. Or just being able to take photos with a comfortable field of view to work with for landscape photography. While on the topic of traveling, I enjoy doing street photography and again, I love using a 35mm for that. I also capture lifestyle images while traveling where I either shoot the food I'm eating or capture environmental portraits of people in the location they're in. It's safe to say that a 35mm prime lens has so much range and versatility. 
So while they do a few different styles of photography where a 35 millimeter is generally more accepted, like travel and landscape, you might be surprised to hear that 35 millimeters is still my favorite focal length to use as a portrait photographer. Typically, portrait photographers prefer longer lenses that compress the scene and isolate the subject from the background. And yes, I do use lenses like that too. I personally really enjoy using an 85 and a 135 for portrait photography, and certain lenses do have their place depending on the style of photos you're trying to achieve. But my signature style of photography is using these wider lenses to create slightly unconventional images. The reason it's unconventional is due to the wide field of view. For example, an 85mm is a very popular portrait lens, but I find it almost looks too beautiful. It compresses, it has significant background to foreground separation, and it looks like a very traditional portrait lens. I know the distortion of a 35 is not everyone's style or preference, but that's one of the reasons I really love this lens. You can absolutely frame a portrait with a 35 millimeter and make it look super unflattering. Usually you want to avoid having anything along the very edges of the frame as it pulls them out and makes them look distorted. But you can use that distortion to your advantage and create some elegant portraits. I personally love creating negative space in my 35 millimeter composition. You can either leave the space negative for romantic, dreamy looking photos. You can also ask your subject to fill the negative space with their posing. So for example, when I have a landscape composition on a 35, I'll ask the subject to move their arms out into the frame or I'll ask them to sit or lay down with an open pose to take up as much room in the photo as possible. This helps to create interesting and more engaging photos. When you make negative space in your compositions, you will end up seeing more of the environment, and locations are one of the most important aspects of my photography. It's one of the elements of photography that really inspires me to create a photo shoot. Because of that, I don't want all my final photos to end up just having bucket in the background Background where you can't really tell where the subject is. I really love how the 35 incorporates more of the background when doing portrait photography since it is a wide angle lens. It helps tell the story of a set of images. This is partly why this lens is so great for wedding photography, by the way. I'm able to capture larger groups of people. My photos are not just isolating the subject, but also showing off the venue the couple spent weeks choosing or the decorations they put up. So it's a great focal length to create context in your photography. But this is not a proper review without some downsides. And as much as I love my 35 millimeter focal length, there isn't really one lens that's perfect for everything. While seeing so much of the location you're shooting in can be a positive to create more context and tell more of a story can also be a negative too. Sometimes it's a little tricky trying to work with less than ideal looking locations as you do need a fairly large space to fill the frame of a 35mm shot. If you find yourself in this situation where you're not really liking the entire location, I would switch to a 50 or 85 millimeter, which compresses the scene, and thus you see less of the background in the image. At a portrait photo shoot, it can also be difficult to capture headshots with a 35. I personally do like capturing close-up portraits with a 35 millimeter, but I acknowledge it can look like a more artistic photo, which is the look I'm going for when I decide to do this. If I need to capture a traditional headshot, I know I need to switch my lens to something longer to avoid too much distortion in my subject's face and to be able to isolate my subject from the background. If you compare this 35mm close-up versus this 85mm close-up, you can really see the difference. The 35 photo incorporates more of the environment and balances the subject with the background, whereas the 85 isolates the subject due to the background to foreground separation. I'd love to know if you could pick only one lens to use for photography, which one would it be? Let me know in the comments. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.